So, polarization mode dispersion is also a kind of dispersion where uh, you know these are the pulses that are propagating in two orthogonal polarizations. Okay. You send a pulse through a fiber, you are exciting all possible polarizations and any polarization you can now say that it is a linear combination of uh, two orthogonal polarizations. So, to my convenience I have marked an x and y axis, but if you ask me in a fiber which is x axis which is y axis there is no reference. I mean you can put the notch or you know in the connector you will have a notch and then you say that that is my axis one axis perpendicular axis is the uh, y axis. Okay. So, the uh, in polarization uh, mode dispersion what we are talking about is the walk off or the difference in speed because the two polarizations may not travel with the same speed. The fiber is actually a birefringent medium. What is a birefringent medium? The different polarizations are experiencing different refractive index. Now, why is a fiber birefringent medium? We took a circularly symmetric core and we said that the core has refractive index N1, clad has refractive index N2, where is birefringence coming from? It is not very straightforward to understand why a fiber is birefringent because it is a circular symmetry which means everywhere here the refractive index is N1. So, it should not matter whether I propagate with this polarization or this polarization. All polarizations should see the same refractive index. But uh, there is a nice uh, uh, white paper by Corning and this discussion is actually based on that Corning uh, white paper which is publicly available. What is seen is that even though you make a you intend to make a circular core, you do not make a circular core. You end up doing uh, some asymmetry in the core. I mean this is a very exaggerated version of the cross section. Instead of having a circle, you made something like this the fiber drawing process right. But again I will say this is a very exaggerated picture, there will be small asymmetries in the core. There could be some built in stress which is trying to uh, local stress in the glass matrix which is trying to kind of push the core there is there is some mechanical uh, stress in the fiber and any mechanical stress in the fiber can change refractive index of the fiber right and that stress could be in any random direction it is not necessary that it is in this direction it could be in any random direction it could be in any di direction it at any other any different length of the fiber it is not necessary that fiber is uniformly stressed the same way. Then there could be external cable stress because when you are laying the cable uh, you are not laying the glass fiber on top of that you are putting a jacket on top of that you are putting you are cabling the fiber right you put very rugged cables. Now, this rugged cable may introduce certain pressure on the glass which could be non-uniform along the length of the fiber. Uh, there could be bend in the fiber, so that will result in asymmetry. There could be twist in the fiber that could result in asymmetry. Uh, all this leads to effectively we can model all this by the fact that the different directions in the fiber are actually experiencing different refractive indices. So, I can resolve that into an x and y direction and say that the effective index along the x direction and the effective index along the y direction are not the same. It does not mean that my fiber got squished this way. It just means that all these variations you are modeling as a change in the n x and n y where x and y are the two polarizations n x and n y are the uh, refractive indices experienced by the two polarizations. Okay. So, this phenomena re res results in something called as an effective birefringence. Right? It is not that any piece of fiber if I cut I am not going to see a core like this I am just modeling the effect like this. Okay. Now, what is the consequence of that? It means that if n x let us say n x is greater than n y uh, one of that uh, uh, is traveling first the other one is. So, n x greater than n y means that this is. So, it depends on how you are looking at it right. So, I mean uh, one of them is you can say that one of them is traveling faster than the other. So, you started with a pulse like this, but when the pulse arrives after there is a there is a time delay between n x and n y. 
So, you started getting the pulse because of the faster propagating field and then you started getting pulse because of the slower propagating field. So, you had actually transmitted this, but what happened is the pulse got spread. So, this uh, is what is called as DGD or differential group delay. The group delay, the group velocity uh, delay for the two polarizations are different and that is called as DGD. The question is, is DGD a constant for a given piece of fiber? So, I take a piece of fiber, a big piece of fiber, I chop it into smaller sections and imagine I am measuring this delay as tau 1 here. Is it necessary that the uh, next one is also tau 1? because the built in stress will be different, the cabling will be different, the environmental conditions will be different. So, I do not get tau 1, I will get something tau 2. Similarly, I will get something like tau 3 or tau n minus 1 tau. So, each section of the fiber is actually experiencing different differential group delay. So, how does one quantify it now? So, fiber birefringence is not a constant because of all these uh, non predictable uh, stress and strain in the fiber. So, overall it also changes with time. Why would it change with time? I lay a cable and a car is moving or a heavy vehicle is moving on top of that. There is an acoustic wave that is propagating that hits the cable that gets transported through the fiber and in that direction there is a local stress that is developed and that can change the speed of the light that can change uh, propagating through in that direction. right? So it is also changing with time. Not only just change, it is static, there is a static change, there is also a time dynamic change. So, it turns out that the whole process though follows a Maxwell statistics. I will tell you what that statistics is and what is quoted is what is called as polarization mode dispersion and that is the average of the differential group delay. You do some kind of average. So, this follows, so the statistics it follows. So, if you keep doing delta tau, so, I lay a cable, this is from Corning again, some measurement data they have given. I lay a fiber and I keep measuring delta tau at different instants of time at different lengths of the fiber. I keep getting different values of this uh, delta tau. This is some peak value and I am doing a histogram. So, I am running an experiment as a function of time, as a function of position. I get different delta taus. I do a histogram of that. That histogram is not a Gaussian, it is this is the Maxwell statistics, right. Uh, uh, I mean the white paper has the details of that statistics, but it just follows some curve like this. And uh, it means that for example, if I take a point here and say that it is uh, 8 percent, what does it mean? There is 8 percent probability that in this particular cable, I have this value of delta tau, whatever that value is. Okay. This is how it gets quantified because it is a completely statistical phenomenon. And the average of this, it is not the peak value, the, uh, the Maxwell statistics is like a long tailed, uh, it is not a symmetric function. So, the average is actually somewhere towards the right of the peak and that average delta tau is what is called as what we define as polarization mode dispersion. And you will see the number uh, and it will turn out that this number if you measure for different lengths of the fiber, listen to this carefully. I do this statistics for 1 kilometer fiber, I do this for 2 kilometer, I do this for 3 kilometer, I do this for 100 kilometer. It is all measured, there is this, it is all measured in the field. Turns out that this is proportional to square root of length. It is not linearly increasing with length, it is proportional to square root of length. That is a observation again. So, you say that P m d is equal to the something called as P m d coefficient times root L and it is measured in picosecond per square root kilometer. So, for example, if you have a P m d coefficient of 0 0.02 picosecond per square root kilometer, okay. the question we are asking is, let us say I take a 10 gigabaud system okay, 
uh, and I am allowing 10 percent of uh, bit slot as PMD. I can allow 10 percent of the spread as PMD polarization mode dispersion is 10 percent of my bit slot. What is the largest length that I can transport? How many kilometers? So, how do I calculate PMD? PMD coefficient is 0 0.02 picosecond per square root kilometer, which means every square root kilometer the spread because just because of PMD is 0 0.02 picoseconds. So, 10 gigabaud bit slot is how much? point nanoseconds. So, 10 percent of bit slot is 0 0.01 nanoseconds which is 10 picoseconds. What length should you propagate to get 10 picoseconds spread? So, that will be 10 picoseconds divided by 0 0.02 which is uh, this is square root length. So, this must be 5 into 10 power <coughs> 10 power 2 kilometers. So, what is the length I can uh, go up to? 25,000 uh, is that right? No, 2 ok. So, that is let us put it in powers. So, 2 lakh 10, 25 into 10 power sorry 4 kilometers. So, if I have a fiber of this kind of PMD, I do not really have to worry about PMD at all. Okay. But the uh, fiber uh, that is commercially used which was laid all these years had a PMD of 1 picosecond per square root kilometer. So, 1 picosecond per square root kilometer will make it square root L will become 10 kilometer square uh, sorry ten, square root of L is 10 it becomes 100 kilometer. And the critical point here is no matter how well you make your fiber if your cabling is not good the way you lay your fiber is not good that is going to change your PMD. Right? So, what is uh, defined in standards is after you cable and after you lay your fiber you have to measure your PMD and that should be less than this current standard is 0 0.02 this is 0 0.02 picoseconds per square but earlier people never paid attention to this PMD, but now uh, it turns out that uh, unless you pay attention to PMD because now you are talking about 25 gigabaud systems and now you are talking also about deployment uh, situations where it could be you know under the field its terrestrial deployment is becoming very large and terrestrial deployment uh, deployments are more prone to uh, vibrations and all these environmental fluctuations. So, one important thing when fiber optic uh, uh, cables are laid is they have a PMD measurement system and they have to measure necessarily what is a PMD after you lay the fiber. So, for example, if you are trying to put your fiber in a metro rail right and there is a lot of vibration that system is prone to vibrations. So, one of the critical thing there is or maybe you are putting it in a ship or you are putting it in a aircraft PMD becomes very important. It is not that I buy a fiber and it is guaranteed a PMD it all depends on how you are laying the fiber. After you lay the fiber you have to measure the PMD 
and then see whether that dispersion is less than what is allowed.